Hello, Scotty here. It's that time of year again when I'm weighing and feeding my colonies and uh, I've come up with a little bit easier and better way to, to weigh these. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, it did make it easier, so actually I've been weighing the colonies for a while and uh, I weighed them on September 1st. Today's September 18th. I, we're going to weigh this one in just a second. I've actually been noticing that they're losing weight. Um, I don't think goldenrod's all it's cranked up to be. Uh, you always hear beekeepers talk about how great the goldenrod is. Well. June and July, I've already mentioned a couple other videos, the weather here was just horrible this year and the bees have been having a hard time. Um, the last two, two weeks, two and a half weeks, the weather has been gorgeous. It's the best weather we've had all summer and uh, goldenrod's been blooming just beautiful and I'm actually noticing my colonies are losing weight. Um, not all of them, some of them are holding, some of them are gaining just a pound or two. Quite a few of them have lost two or three pounds, so I don't think goldenrod's that great. Um, but anyway, so I'm keeping close track, I'm weighing, and like I say, I have been feeding. So I have a, a spreadsheet all set up here, and I weighed this colony on September 1st, and this is colony 21, um, and it weighed 104 pounds. So I want to show you how I'm weighing them this year, and uh, um, if you remember last year, if you watched my videos from last year, I had actually put wooden blocks to put everything together, or I just kind of got brave and just let the propolis do it and for the most part that worked out. We had one colony that fell apart and it got rather exciting very quickly. So my sweetheart said she didn't want to do that again this year. So what I did this year is I, I, I just took an old ratchet strap and I got a couple pieces of plate here. It's about four inches by, oh, I guess that was about six or eight inches and I bent them to a 90. I'll maybe take a still image of this. Nothing serious. Put it in the vise and I heated it up and bent it over. And I can hook them under each side of the hive and then tighten it and uh, actually it makes it very very easy to do this. And like I said, I've been weighing, I've probably weighed every colony I have about three times already and I haven't had any come apart at all. So it does work real well. Um, we have the other camera running here so hopefully Hopefully you can get a better view, but it's just a, like I say, it's just a L-shaped thing. And on the pallets, it's pretty easy. I just take a, a pry bar and I hook it under here and then I just slide that under like that and it stays. It, it, if, you, if, if you were on a couple of those rails, I think this might be a little harder. I do have a couple that are similar to that. And it's a little tricky to get that to stay until you get it tightened. But once it's tightened, it's fine. So then... I just bring the uh, the other strap up and over and down the other side and I do the same thing. I just I just lift the colony gently and put that underneath there and then that's all fine. Then I grab the tail of this thing and I did shorten it. It, it certainly didn't need to be as long as it was. Um, so I just pull that up snug and then a few clicks of the ratchet deal and make sure that it is tight. I do check the other side, make sure it hasn't come out of the way, get rid of my hive tool. Then. I do this exactly the same as I did last year. I just, uh, yeah, I have to have a little piece of plywood. The scale has four little feet in, in the pallet. What, guaranteed one of the little feet falls into a hole. So it's good to have uh, a little chunk of plywood, get the tail of that strap out of the way. Then I just lift it up, get the scale out of the way, put that piece of plywood in there. Put the scale in there. The scale has a lock, so I make sure the lock's not on. Which I got a little bit too far in. Kind of want to try and get this edge in the center of that scale or close to it. Then just grab the, the hive on the other side and then bring it up so that it's balanced. It seems to be the key to this in order to get an accurate reading. Now I can reach down. I don't know if that camera's picking it up or not. Is it? Okay. I can still, I'm going to reach down there and lock it. It's actually just a shade under 100 pounds. Looks like about 98. That's yeah, 90. So then lift this up, take that out, take the plywood out. Hopefully that camera can see that. Okay, so 98. And like I say, I was, what did I say it was? 21, 104. So yeah, I have lost a little bit of weight. So now today's the 18th. I have it here. I'm going to put here uh, 98. And then I put a slash and I'm going to add five gallons. So I put 5G there just so I know. And then uh, I'm keeping track. That out of the way. Take the ratchet strap back off. Pry bar on the far side. Lift it up. Take that off. Lift this side up. So that's all there is to weigh in it. Um, I think I mentioned last year. 
My target weight's 150 pounds. Um, so for every 10 pounds under that, I'm gonna add one gallon of syrup. So I'm running around 100 pounds. I'm gonna put five gallons on here. Um, we've been removing jars today and reweighing, and I'm actually finding they're gaining about 30 pounds. So I'll probably give them a week or two and I'll go back and feed those ones a bit more. But for today, this one I wanna put five, five gallons on. I have my feeder jars ready. Uh, hive tool, smoker, ha! Ah. <laughs> I was doing this the other day. See, I got a bee on here. I spilled sugar water on this and I've washed it, but the bees certainly are interested in it now. So when you go to pick it up, you do have to be a little bit careful. Um, clearly I didn't wash it well enough, so don't spill sugar water on your smoker. <laughs> you know. Okay, so take the, uh, take the inner cover off gently and quietly. And this one doesn't have enough for entrance, so it's gonna be a little bit easier. Bees are actually quite quiet right now anyway. Uh, I'm gonna smoke them a little bit anyway. I do see quite a few bees between the joints here, between the, between the frames. I just wanna scrape a little wee bit of this wax off if I can. Okay, then all I need to do, I've got these three quarter inch shims, same as I had last year, just three quarter inch by three eighths by, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches long. And I just carefully lay six on here, watching that I don't, uh, that I don't squish any bees. If I can possibly avoid it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I bring my little garden cart. Actually, I'm getting bees. Bees are all over this already. That's fine. And I think this is how I went and got sugar water on my, my smoker. I was doing this, so I'm gonna move that smoker. So I don't do that again. And of course, there are bees on them, so you want to be careful when you grab it. I've been putting these jars on and off here for the last few days, and I have I have got stung once. Grabbed a jar, I squished a bee. Get them off of there. One more. Then, my vent box back on. And actually this year, I've been making some new vent boxes and I have purposely made them taller so that it's easier to cover these jars. Now this inner cover has no top entrance, so it's just too easy, I just put it back on. Uh, the ones that do have a top entrance, I'm actually turning it over and I turned it around to put the entrance at the back, but up, um, so the bees can't get in that way. Put the roof back on. It definitely creates some confusion for the colonies that did have an upper entrance, they can't, it probably takes them about three days to figure it out and then they just use the bottom. The reason I did that, last year I noticed I had a couple of colonies that um, I didn't actually put the inner covers back on, I just put the roofs on. I guess the roofs maybe were twisted a little bit and I had a couple of colonies that hardly put on any weight and I, I th kind of think I set a little robbing situation going there. So I'm not perfect. Just ask my wife, she'll tell you. Um, let me make a little mistake there. So this year I'm making sure that I put the inner covers back on. If they have the upper entrance, I'm flipping it over but turning it around. Um, and if, if I notice anything loose, I'm either using painter's tape or if I can, I don't need to do it on this one, but you can just push it down and then just put a, a staple in a few of these spots. Like if something's a, a little bit out of tilt, like I say, this one here seems to be pretty good. Then it's just a matter of putting the roof back on. Uh, like I said, I was taking jars off today. Um, some of these hives are emptying these five jars in just two, three days. So I'll come back in a couple days and check this and uh, show you what we have. So stick around. Hello, Scotty here. It's September 22nd. It's been four days since I put those feeder jars on. I've been going around the apiary removing jars. Uh, I think I got three out of about eight that have just a tiny little bit of syrup left in the jar. So I'll leave them on for another day. Um, busy tomorrow, but I'll get back in here on Sunday. Um, so it, really not a whole lot to this. I do have the smoker going. Uh, very warm, very humid day. The bees actually seem to be in a pretty good mood. So I just removed the roof. Um, I will put a little wee bit of smoke in through the <laughs> ventilation holes just to, yeah, like I say, most of, them, most of them have been pretty good, but I will throw a little smoke in. I already did have a quick peek in this one. The jars are empty, but all I basically did is um, come along with the hive tool, crack open the inner cover. As always, I always take it off kind of slow. Sometimes you get a few, 
a few bees fly up in the air, but it's usually not a real big deal. So just be a little bit, a few bees on that, and I'm serious. Now, then what I'll do is, this is usually propolized a little bit, so just crack that, hardly anything on it. Now there's always bees in it, so be careful where you put your fingers. Um, this one doesn't have too many. Gently lift it off. I don't know if the camera will see it or not. There's a few bees there, so I just sit it. I just sit it in front of the colony on its side and just leave it alone. Take the jars off. They're always stuck down. You just grab them and pull them, but just watch where you put your fingers. There are bees kicking around. You squish one, you're going to get stung. So there's always bees on the lid. I just carefully lay them in the grass, and uh, I'll leave them there for 15, 20 minutes. And when I come back, when I come back to pick up the jars, take them in to clean them, they'll be they'll be gone so it's not a real complicated deal it's like I say just watch where you put your fingers only got popped once a couple days ago wasn't paying attention not her fault okay so yeah there's lots of bees on that one now these little sticks they always build wax all over them they're always stuck down if you just put your tool in and pry them they go flying so you got to kind of make sure you have a hold of them and now there's bees on them sometimes I just knock them off I'll just set them to the side um, if you don't want to knock them off, just when you set it down, just try not to squish them. But I find it easiest just to just to knock them off. They don't seem to get too upset about it. And if there is one left on there, well, when you put it down, just make sure that you don't. By the time you come back out here, I'll take jars off all the colonies, and then I come back out and uh, start picking stuff up. Um, usually, by the time I get back out here, the bees have kind of vacated all the stuff. So that's that, put that there. Now this inner cover has a little wee bit of fur comb. I'm just gonna scrape that off real quick. And set it aside. Uh, this one did not. I have a couple colonies this year that I was not running upper entrances, but if it had an upper entrance, of course I would put it, uh, I would put the upper entrance back. So now, grab my, get the smoker out of the way. Grab my pry bar and my nifty little ratchet strap with these little feet on the end put the put the pry bar underneath just lift it up slide that one under Move the ratchet strap up and over Move those sticks a little bit put this one underneath there tighten up the ratchet strap try not to get the try not to twist the strap and what do I do with the scale <sighs> one moment all right been weighing several other colonies, so try to keep track of your equipment. Unlock it, lift the colony up, slide that under about halfway. Then uh, grab the other side again, watching that you don't grab a bee. Definitely heavier. Get it stood up on its edge. You got to get it balanced in order to get a in order to get an accurate reading. I'm glancing down there. It's just about 140 pounds. Lock it. Set the uh, set the hive back down. Remove the scale. So yeah, I'm at 140 pounds. I will. Uh... So now I'll go back to my chart. Originally, this colony number 21 was 104 pounds. When I weighed it the day I put the feet on, it was uh, 98 pounds. So now I'll mark down under September 21st. 140 pounds and That's all there's to it. I'll put this back together. I'll come back in about two weeks probably maybe three weeks and I'll reweigh everything and I'll make a decision whether to give them some more food or not. So anyway Thanks for watching as always you be good to your bees. I'm sure be good to you. See you next time